I want to debunk a couple of myths, first of all, about sales promotions. And um, the first is that if you have great ratings, you won't have to do sales promotions. If only it were true. It, it seems instead that the demand goes up because what happens is when you're the number one adult 2554 radio station in your market, the sales manager puts a blistering rate on the rate card. And in order to justify it or to get additional reach and frequency, which the client can't really afford to buy, they say, let's give them a promotion. So even though you have good ratings, the expectation is still going to be there that you're going to have to do some sales promotions. Now, there is a science to this, and I'm going to share it with you. But first, I'm going to ask a question. Why do we do sales promotions? It's because they work for clients if they're done properly. Why do they work for clients? Well, there's three reasons, basically. The first is position. Where do you run your sales promos in the hour? Usually at the start of the stop set. And as you know, each time a commercial is played or a non-music element is played, the tendency for the listener to tune out is greater. It just enhances. Each time the successive spot runs, there's more temptation for them to go. So because a sales promotion usually enjoys a better position in the hour, that's why it has a better chance of working. Second reason, implied endorsement. But whenever you have your call letters in a promotional announcement, you are lending the endorsement of your radio station to whatever that effort is. Even if you just have one of your station voices voice the spot, even if they don't say, hey, this is Slim Jim, meet me this Saturday from noon to two at McMahon Chevrolet. Even if they're not going that far, there is an implied endorsement, and the concept is called the halo effect. Every product, every brand has a halo over it, and when you stand under the halo or let someone else stand under your halo, you are letting some magic dust fall off on them. And the final reason is compressed content. You have to communicate in 30 seconds exactly what the promotion is about. Even if you drive them to another source to get the rest of the information, you've got 30 seconds to tell them. So you automatically leave out phone numbers that don't mean anything. You leave out phrases like, that's right, and all that other stuff that, that creeps, finds its way into 60-second spots written by clients. You get down to business. This Saturday from noon to two, win $1,000 cash. When you spin the prize wheel, I'm a man Chevrolet. 30 seconds and you're done. So for those three reasons, sales promotions have a better chance of success sometimes than regular contesting. Realizing that you have all of this to work with, all this to, to value the radio station, you can't go to the client and tell them about the prime position they're getting because then they're going to say, well, gosh, I never thought about that. I don't want to be the fifth spot in the sixth spot pod, and you've created a monster. But tell your salespeople this so they'll understand. Don't just give these things away to anybody that's got $1,500. Make them understand the value that you're giving them with sales promotions.